welcome to Mums at the Table. Coming up today, oh, do you know what? I even forgot to just introduce who we are. I'm Rachel. I'm Shona. Shona. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Coming up today, we've got our experts. Ask the Dr. Simone, so that's all our medical questions answered. We've got Amanda, our dietitian, and Rach, our tech guru, who is helping us catch up to speed with all things tech. Got a bit of a, a question for you. It could be a frightening question, but what does your morning routine look <gasps> like? <laughs> Is it pristine, clean, neat, tidy, ticking out the door? Well, look, when I had children at home, um, definitely when they were little, I was the one up before everybody else and making sure, you know, the breakfast was on the go because I had two kids getting out to a bus and, you know, all sorts of You're things You're the epitome like that. of the perfect mother. No, I'm not. <laughs> I can't say I had it all together because come, you know, quarter to eight when the kids were on the bus, I fell into a heap. <laughs> And then had to start the clean up, the massive clean up. The the clean up. Yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. That the truth. You look. We all know I'm not quite as organised <gasps> as you. Shock horror. I'm, I'm a little bit more go with the flow, but school has sort of forced me into yeah. being somewhat organised. And now that I think about it, I actually. I'm not that bad. Like, I have a list on the board. So they have a tick list, all three girls for yep. school. And they've got to be able to tick each one off in the morning. So they're responsible for starting to get ready for the day sure. themselves. So I've actually, you know, taught my eldest to get breakfast for my youngest. So that's brought me, you know, 10, 15 minutes more in bed. <laughs> So I can get up a little bit later, <laughs> which I like. But so did you did you do like packed lunches the night before? And... Oh, I'm the mum who's done the frozen sandwiches in the freezer, and yep, don't judge, it works. <laughs> and that has, you know, I, I have found methods to make my morning a little bit more relaxed at home. You know, I am getting the girls up earlier, and and this is. As I hear myself say this, I'm like, who are you, Rachel? <laughs> yes. it's, it's not me, but it, it's, a, it's a time in my life where I have to sort of employ yeah. those types of yeah, activities. Yeah, because otherwise you're driving them to school and yep. you, it just eats <laughs> into <bus>. your day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On the bus as well, but they've got to catch that bus. And yeah. like you, I still fall into a heap. Yeah. I have to fix everything up and then get myself and off to work. So I, I think there are things you've got to do that work for your family. So, you know, does a tick list work for your family? Um, does something else work for your family? You know, what are you going to train your kids to do so that you can lessen that activity yourself? Yeah. And that's the approach I've taken. Yeah, and, and so that life isn't quite so stressful at 7 o'clock in the morning and then you've got the rest of the day to sort of... Yeah, and, and it's usually me on my own because my husband's already gone to work, yeah. you know, by 5 in the morning. So most mornings it's just me and, and the girls trying to get out the door. Mm. So we have had to employ some of those tactics. Tactics. And yeah, I'm probably a bit slow. It's taken me a lot longer to employ them than someone else. Um, but in holidays, it's a, a different story. story. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's get fend for yourself. <laughs> Amen to that. To feed or not to feed, that is the question. I'm sitting down with Dr. Simone and we're going to be talking about when to get our babies on the heavies. Oh, <laughs> off the milk and off the, onto the good stuff. Onto the good stuff. All right. So this is an interesting one and this is very much a your baby is ready when your baby is ready and not a moment before. Right. There are a couple of, I guess, physical attributes that a bub needs in terms of being ready to start solids. Okay. So they need to be able to sit up and hold their heads up. Right. If their heads are still flopping all over the place... Don't force feed. Don't force feed. <laughs> so around about four months is the earliest right. possible time, but any time between four and six months is entirely acceptable to start solids. Okay. Um, babies will also let you know whether they're ready or not yes. by either swallowing or spitting out. Yeah. And so if you, you're offering your baby some solids and your baby spits them out at you, that's fine, leave it a week or two, come back to it. Yeah. They will start when they are ready. I think that's so important because I know as mums we're always comparing um, each other's children to see, oh, well, this one's baby started eating at four months, why isn't my baby eating at four months? But I guess we need to, it's case by case, each Absolutely. child is different. And so one child will start at four months, one child won't really take to it until seven or eight months. So it's a, it's a matter of just watching and knowing your child. Is there some foods that we should try and avoid giving our kids um, well, at a young age, like meat for instance? Well or? look, most of the time we like to start off with foods that are really easy for their guts to digest. Right. And so the foods that I like to recommend that parents start off with first are things, things like rice-based mm -hmm. foods, um, so rice cereal and those sorts of things, and also fruits that are easy to digest, so things like pear and those sorts of things are really gentle on the gut and easy to digest. Okay. Interestingly enough, I mean, not to say that peanut butter ought to be your child's first yes. food, but there's a lot of, lot of talk about allergies in children and food yeah. allergies in particular. And so if you were breastfeeding, then while you are breastfeeding is the best time to be introducing those allergy 
potential okay. foods. So as a mum, we should be eating maybe eggs and peanut butter, or do you mean... Unless you have a reason not to, right. there's no reason to necessarily avoid those foods while you're breastfeeding. And if you are going to introduce those foods to your baby, do it while you're breastfeeding as well. Not when they're younger? Well, probably not the first things that they should be having. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask why? Um, because you, they, they don't necessarily have the, the immune system to cope with that at that point in time. Right. Is there yeah. other ways? Because I know... I know with, I had four children and the first three were fine with mushed up food. Yep. And then I had um, Oceana and she just grabbed anything just shoved it in her mouth. And I found out later yeah, there's that, a term. That's called baby-led yeah. weaning. So there's two, <laughs> there's two schools of thought when it comes to food. There's the spoon-feed puree school of thought, spoon-feed mash, and then there's the your kid will grab and eat whatever they want to. <laughs> right. Um, Survival of the fittest, I call it. <laughs> and that tends to happen a little bit more in subsequent children. But, yeah, OK. <laughs> but, no, making sure that they have good health, good options to be offered to them right. there is a really good thing to Not do. Not like a hard carrot or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something mm. that's... Um, so sometimes those mesh feeder type options can be right. really useful to stop them from getting chunks of things that are too big for them to be able to and swallow safely. I think you can get them at supermarkets yeah. and they just put the fruit Very in. Very accessible. Can... Have a suck on it. Absolutely. Right. There's some great tips there for when to start your child onto solids. Um, so look, keep it locked right here. Mum's at the table. And welcome back. We're here with Amanda, our nutritionist. Hi, Amanda. Hi, dear. We are going to talk about a very controversial topic today, how to get your kids to eat more vegetables. Is that <laughs> controversial or what? Yeah. Um, what do you think of this topic? It's... Oh. Yeah, it's certainly a challenging one, isn't it? Because kids and veggies, they don't really tend to be the best of friends, do they? <laughs> no. So, and I think this is really because of their strong flavours and their textures, so they can be quite crunchy and stringy. Um, but it is important that they are having veggies on a daily basis just because they provide lots of vitamins and minerals, fibre, as well as what we call phytonutrients, which helps to fight disease. Phytonutrients, I like that Yeah, way. Yeah, and the other thing is, it's good to aim to get in three different coloured vegetables in their diet every day. So try for a red, orange and a green every day and give them about two to three options, um, or op I should say opportunities to yes, try okay. to have some vegetables in the day as well. Awesome, so three colours, remember that. And what about yeah. some strategies? We need to know yes. how to get yes. these vegetables in. The important part, the strategies. So firstly, I think it's really important that you let your children see you eating and enjoying vegetables because they do really model our behaviour. Yes, that's a good, that is yeah. a good point. Yeah, so also it's it can be good, depending on the age of your child, of course, to explain to them just why veggies are so good for them. And it doesn't need to be complicated, just something simple like Carrots are good for you because they help your eyes. They Perfect. keep your eyes healthy. Yes, and we cut carrots in the middle. And if you cut a carrot yeah. in the middle, it actually does look yes, like an eye. That's that's so great. they're clever ways to show your child. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. And what about disguising them? Like, can yeah. you disguise? Yes, yeah. You, so the other thing to do if your kids really dislike vegetables and it's hard to get them in is to just add them to the foods that they do like. So you can grate veggies, you can mash them, you can add frozen veggies, also legumes, because remember that these are also vegetables too. Okay, there you go. And it works well in things like pasta sauces and um, lasagna. Uh, patties, fritters, that sort of thing. We love disguising. If you go to, <laughs> if you go to our, um, we, we're running out of time, so I'm just going to share this. But yeah. on Mums at the Table, we've actually got a little cooking segment as well, mm. and in that we disguise vegetables like our mac and cheese. If you go yeah. to our mac and cheese recipe, ah. we disguise potato um, in the cheese sauce with carrots and all different stuff. So go to that. Go check out this, what we do to disguise vegetables. Yes, but yeah. remember, three colours. Thank you for joining us. If you are interested in these topics, please join us on um, our YouTube channel or Mums at the Table Facebook page. But we'll see you next time. Hey, if you're just joining us, be sure to subscribe to our Mums at the Table channel because we are going to be talking about how to use technology and keep fit, keep healthy, something that a lot of us try to do. Yes. Want to do. Yeah, well... Mentally I mean ill. 
physically, Sometimes mentally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's stuff for that as well. And then we'll have to do that on another episode. I think so. Yes. That's a good point. But for this one, we're going to talk about how to be physically fit or how to use your technology to help you stay physically fit. And I think we can talk about it for us as moms, for um, our kids and as a family as well. So for moms, I personally like using Nike's um, fitness app. Right. You tell can, me about that. Yes. I love it because you can tell um, the app basically what you're trying to improve. Mm -hmm. Like you want to um, have stronger legs or arms or you want to just work on your heart. And one of the good encouragements that they have is that they have um, professional sports figures. So they'll have, you know, tennis players or basketball players there and they're doing the exercises for you. So mm -hmm. it gives you a little encouragement maybe to see Serena Williams doing right. some jump squats before yes. she asks you to do them. Mm. Then they'll tell you how long you need to do them. And they'll count down until you move on to the next exercise. Got that little push. Yeah. yeah. And then um, after you've done a certain number of exercises, you get a little um, photo. Like it'll be this cool photo you can share on social media. Oh, um, okay. It gives you that little boost. So Are these apps free or do they? Do you have to pay to get these fitness apps on your phone? Yeah, this one is free. Um, what, last time I used it was free. But of course, checking those terms and conditions because there's always something on the back end, data that's being collected. But that's, you know, comes part and parcel of being in the online world now, right? Yeah. Another thing, I guess, is um, Fitbit seems to be something that a lot of people have taken yes. to. I know I did own one. I don't know where it is at the moment, but um, yes. yeah, <laughs> obviously the fitness journey is still happening. But, you know, you've moved in that direction. Yeah, we're, you know, we're making little baby steps. Yeah, but, you know, you need to get 10,000. They're recommending 10,000 steps yes. a day. So that, right. that reminder, my husband uses it quite a bit. All of my family's using it. Even my niece and nephew who are school age are loving making sure they get enough yeah. steps a day. So that, okay. And you can make a little competition within your family to see yes. who gets to those, you know, the most steps a day. I'm glad you talked about families. Are there anything that we can use um, online uh, that we can get our families involved in? Yeah, I think one thing that's interesting and exciting is called geocaching. So it's kind of like a digital scavenger hunt where you're getting your family going around to different locations looking for things, but you're getting them up and moving. So you're kind of engaging um, that interaction around the technology And just well. getting everyone out of the house. I yeah. think that's so important. Just make making those steps exactly. to get up, get out. Now, this last one is a bit aspirational, you know, because it's not the cheapest, but I think it's exciting. Right. And it's um, moving into the world of virtual reality. So mm. the Oculus Rift headset that you're able to put on, um, and you can play a game of dodgeball, a virtual game of dodgeball. So no. You, yes, and you can change the levels all the way up to, you know, super competitive. So imagine your kid there with the headset on, like, actually dodging the balls. I mean, if nothing else, it gives the rest of the family a laugh, right? Right. Yeah. So I think that there are some exciting things that we can do to still use technology, but keep, you know, our heart rate going and being fit as well. Yeah, I think there's some really good pros and cons there. Thank you so much, Rach, for those tips. Look, if you want more information on these awesome tips, hit us up on our YouTube Mums at the Table channel. Okay, so how do you balance the family needs around holiday time, you know, Christmas, which we've just had, or, you know, other holiday seasons, birthdays? How do you handle those family dynamics? Splitting yourself, going in two different directions. Well, for me, it's been really hard. And now that my family are older and the, the kids have left home and they're growing up and they've got jobs and they've got friends and they, they want to be celebrating stuff, you know, their birthdays and things mm. with them, we've struggled a little bit mm. with this. And the Christmas just gone, we went down to my son, my eldest son, in November and spent had Christmas Day mm. in November with the grandchild and the son because we just can't fit it all in. And it just yeah. gets too hard to try and get everybody together. So we just went down and did that. Christmas Day, we're sort of... It, uh, we're struggling because the boys are working or, mm. you know, they, they want to be doing something else. So Is it easier when they were younger, Oh, yeah, though? much easier. Yeah. You just bundled them into the car and, and, and off they went. <laughs> now they've got minds of their own, shock horror. <laughs> yeah, so what are you that, doing? That could come into the equation. <laughs> no, no, we don't want that. Look, we're lucky in that, you know, every second year we sort of switch. So one year we'll have Christmas with my family and we'll just focus solely on that and then the second year we'll, we'll go up north and, and be with my husband's family and we can focus solely on that so we're not split but I've literally watched family members who have a different family dynamic yep. go from one place to the next to the next all in one day on a Christmas day and well that, that's pretty big 
Their kids are exhausted, yeah. they're exhausted, and it just becomes a day that they actually don't look forward to. Yeah. And so I really love your idea of sort of doing Christmas at a different time. I'm seeing that more and more, mm. actually. Yeah, I, I think it's just easier um, mm. just because there's a, you, you're not trying to cram everybody in mm. to that one day because really it is, it's one day. Yeah. Isn't it better to celebrate your family over the yeah. whole year? Oh, well, you know me, I'm always up for a celebration. Yeah, we know. So spread it throughout the year. Hey, so are you. <laughs> <laughs> what about birthdays? What are you doing with birthdays? Because I'm finding that tricky now that the yeah. boys are wanting to celebrate their, that with their friends and yeah. do other things. Oh, well, I guess we're not at that stage yet, but, uh, you know, I guess it depends on family dynamics and relationships. But I want my kids to know that that invitation sort of open to the extended family and, and that, you know... Um, family members and that's sort of on them if they can turn up, which, you know, majority of the time we have a close family and very blessed yeah. that way. But, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for my kids to know that, you know... Everybody's invited. Yeah, yeah. sure, no yeah. worries. Was that the case with your kids when you were younger? Yes, yes. And it's much easier when they're younger because you can just bundle them into the car or wherever yep. and go and do it. Yeah. yeah, well, how do you do family dynamics and different split events? We'd love to hear on social media. Don't forget, you can subscribe and get a hold of our Mums at the Table magazine, which has amazing articles in it for you at all stages of life. Also, we've got our YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to and catch up on other wonderful episodes we have here on Mums at the Table. We'll see you next time. Bye.